What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. So today I'm going to show you how to wrap the door in the new Vivid Nightshade Purple. Nightshade Purple comes with a protective cap. It's 5 mil thick. Pretty thick for a film. PPF is 6 mil. So not much thinner than some PPF. Most PPF actually. Expel is 8 mil. And uh, yeah, so we're getting a lot of paint protection with this. Again, soft healing, that kind of stuff and uh, pliable as well, which is really nice. Actually, I find it more pliable than their other colors that they had had out for a while now. So I already have the door cut as seen in the other video. The panel is already prepared and uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to wrap it. So again, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're running this film directionally. This means not turning it upside down 180. We want to keep it all exactly the same direction, 100% as much as possible. Now, again, that won't happen with the hood. The hood will run a different way compared to the bumper or the fender. The hood actually runs across. But, I mean, looking at it, it looks, it matches up with the fender afterwards. We'll do a walk around video to show you guys what all of this looks like when it's all finished, which is, this is the last piece. So, magnets, it's always good to have two because this prevents the film from pivoting. So the vinyl will not pivot up and down. As you can see, I don't even have one on this side. The vinyl is still not falling. That won't happen with all films. It's a little bit thicker and it also has the cap on it, which is more rigid. I like to leave the cap on when I do most of the squeegeeing simply because, saw something else there, simply because the, sorry guys, Thought I got everything there, but I just saw, I think it's paper. It's fine. Got it. Again, I like to leave the cap on because it's going to keep the film more rigid, especially when I go to remove the release liner or backing paper. It'll keep the film more in place where I want it to be. So I'll just anchor to the door there. It shouldn't pivot if I have a good anchor. Perfect. Look how easy that is. Look how nice and flat it is. Obviously, this is the cap that looks like this right now. You can see all the lines in it. Not a big deal. We're going to be removing that. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to find that body line that I'm looking for. I can actually see it right here. I'm going to fix this up slightly right here. And we're going to go to town. There's the door handle. I want to keep tension going across the door handle because I don't want to create slack in the door handle area. I want it to be tight across the door handle area. If I have too much slack across the door handle area, that means when I go to push it in, we could be pushing in too much slack. And that will cause its own problem. So I won't be able to do much uh, with this section right here because I need to remove the release, the, the capping, because I need to stretch the vinyl up a little bit. So I'm going to take care of everything right here and as much as I can with the cap on the view, on the panel. So again, we're laying to this recess that's right here. We're going to seal off the top as much as possible. There we go. Now as far as uh, ability goes when installing this, you're going to want to have probably some experience it's a little bit thicker, so this requires a bit of a different handling when it comes down to that. Otherwise, again, it's very pliable, especially when the cap is off. But it may not be, you may not want it to be your first choice when it comes to installation uh, for your first time or second time around. There we go. So I'm going to leave it right about here because I'm going to have to do some heating and stretching with the cap off. I've got to fix up this little bit right here just because the door handle gets a little wonky with the body line in the recess. So we can actually take this up and I'm going to come a little bit higher right there. Again, we're going to keep it tight across the door handle as much as we can 
and then work our way down. So you're going to watch how easy this is right now. Now, am I, is there a risk of getting contaminants underneath? Not really, because I've sealed off the top, and I know that I have nothing on the bottom that's going to be dragged in. We're good to go. I can almost just let this fall. The only reason why I'm not letting it fall is because I have better control and better air release with it up. It's faster. It's just simply faster to squeegee. I'm letting the, all the air out the bottom right now as I hold this up just like this. It doesn't get any faster than this. I'm creating my own air release. Essentially, if this was like a non-air release vinyl, I could install it similar to this way. Now only when I get near the bottom can I start pushing it down like this. And I'm getting it slightly tucked underneath the edge. And again, this is all with the cap on still. Good, I like it. I'm good. Saw a little air here still. Let's get that. So right now, I can take the cap off. This whole, this whole door is basically wrapped. Would that take like three minutes? And it's pristine. It must look way better right now, obviously, with the cap off and it not looking all wrinkled anymore. I'm going to grab the heat gun, which I didn't switch out yet for my Vivid one. This one's dying. The cord is actually... Um, the cord has been uh, taped together, so I didn't want to fuss, fuss around with it. So I'm just going to add a bit of heat right here and get this slightly flattened out. Again, very gentle with the heat. You can see that I'm not even moving my hands. So I'm just going to place the vinyl down. It needs to cool slightly, which it probably has already. And then we're going to get in here and squeegee this into this recess. I could use a little shield guard here to help alleviate some of the the swirl marks, but again, I don't really care so much about it right now with my car. I can go in there and post heat it out afterwards. And it's a very small section. Cool. So now, another important thing to remember, I have that nice dent there. That's one thing to remember. Another important thing to remember is to take care of this area first before you do all your cutting. If you make a mistake here, you'll be able to retract the vinyl back to this area if you haven't cut. If you've cut, then you're going to have a much more difficult time getting the vinyl back to this area. So we're going to heat it and you're going to see it glass out, right? Look at that. Beautiful. Now I want to sample it. I'm going to see how warm it is. And we're just going to go and go for the middle there. You got to go and get the outside as well. But we do want to make sure we're kind of pushing it down into the deepest point almost right away. This minimizes how much tension we put on the film. This works with chrome too. So I'm going to go over here now and we're going to work our way in to this area. Glove is, glove is imperative at this point. Need it. So all the air is coming out this way. I didn't go this way because the air was actually going to get locked in at this top edge, while this sits lower. If I take my time, we can get it all out. It looks very pretty. Again, we'll just go around this. We're going to heat it up quite a bit. I like to, just so I can really identify where that is. Again, heat it a lot here so I can identify where I'm actually going to be cutting. It's perfect. So again, we're going to go over the door edge. Now, since I have a dent in my door right here, this is how I'm going to manage it. I'm going to pull the vinyl back slightly. And I'll use that squeegee. I'm going to use this squeegee. And I'm going to push it in 
so I'm not stretching in, just to that little recess there, just so I can find that door edge again and make my cut very nice and straight before I was bridging a gap slightly. Perfect. Now we're going to cut, seal up the edges, and the door's done. Super easy. So again, I'm going to cut on the fender side until I get slightly around the bottom corner. And then I'm going to basically cut flush along the bottom of the door because I've actually pushed the vinyl around underneath slightly, which is enough. I had my midnight sun wrapped like that for six months and had no sign of any lifting at all because I did not stretch down here. So as I come around right here right now, I'm going to start to bring in my blade and bring it in underneath the door. Now I'm cutting the wrong way. I should be cutting in the other direction, but I want you to see. So you can see my blade is actually on the underside, kind of pointing up. And that is the way to do it. So I'm going to start at that end to be more comfortable so I don't mess up my cut. And I might as well start all the way at the top here. So I'm cutting on the fender side. Again, I'm putting myself in an awkward position here just to show you guys how I'm cutting. Back of the blade, and I don't have a lot of clicks out on the blade, very minimal. As I come around the bottom again, I'm going to scoop in with the blade and have it pointing up. We're good, we're through. So I'll come up here. We're going to take all this off up to here. Now all we got to do is the top edge right here, which I can just bridge this gap right now and cut in between it, and this piece can just fall in. For me personally, it doesn't really matter. I don't need to wrap all the way up to the top of the window edge, and it's going to get covered by the window trim anyways. Down here, I want to be a little bit more careful because I know that my mirror goes back here and it doesn't quite cover everything, so I have to leave myself a little bit more. I'm going to get rid of that big piece and we'll deal with the small piece. I'm going to open the door in just a second, but first I'm going to work this edge right around before I open the door. So I'll start it with my glove. And actually, kind of wants to curl itself around anyways, which is great. Once I get there, we're going to find something that, that fits in there nice. It's usually not that. It's usually this guy. Now, keep in mind, once we get around, we're good. And if we have, over time, maybe any excess vinyl hanging off or whatever because we didn't get it placed, stuck down to the other side. It's not the end of the world. You can go in there, back of the blade, and trim it all off, as long as you're not ex showing any exposed paint. So just a way to deal with that. Let's deal with this top section up here. I'm going to cut right in that rubber grommet, and then that piece will be done. That's all done. I'm going to push all this down. Make sure it's nice and tight. See how it just fell right in the middle there? It's perfect. Just make sure there's no air in there. You hear those bubbles popping. Work around the back of the door, like so. Gradually, okay? It's not a race. Lead with the heat gun and follow with your hand. Always using a glove. I will have this dent pulled one day and all the rest of them. <laughs> so 
So I like, to, I like to fold, when I come to a body line like that, I like to fold it around, heat it and fold it around so we don't get any wrinkles. Now that the door is open, I'm going to run around the bottom of the door right now. Start down here. This will require maybe one or two passes since there isn't much, but there's enough to roll around and I can feel it. And I'll go back one more time. That's one. All we gotta do is cut this out and our door is finished. Always stabilizing myself with a finger on the car. Gives myself gives me a nice cut. Then we're gonna find that edge, poke through. I can cut on the screw, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna come right around. It's just a screw. I'm gonna hold this piece. And get that sucker out of the way too. Give it a little kiss with some heat. We're done. That's it. So if you want to see what the back side of the door looks like, since Soren already has the camera here, I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. Because you want to see what this back edge looks like. So again, we can see or not so much see where that edge is. It's a little hard to tell because the color is dark. But it's there and it's nice and straight. And that's enough. We've got about an eighth of an inch wrapped all the way around. This is the part of the car where people will grab onto, so having some extra vinyl there is handy. People will maybe flick it with their hand and stuff like that, so just keep that in mind. Otherwise, we are finished. i pop this little trim piece back on. I'll pop the door handle back on and give you sort of this perspective right here just with the door with, with the mirror at least with the door handle on later because I'm going to do a walk around but I do want to show you sort of what the door looks like when it's completed these mirrors come off very easily which is nice Cool, I'm going to slam the door. Remember when you're taking your door handle off to always roll the window down. This will give you some access to the handle on the inside and not lock yourself out of the car. I, I typically take off one handle at a time on most cars and I put that one back after I'm done wrapping and move to the other side. Guys, if you liked the video and you thought it was informative, don't forget to like it and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos. Uh, don't forget about our website. I'll put a link there in the description below. Subscribe to our mail list and uh, get updates on new products, exclusive offers, that kind of stuff. Again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care. Oh, it stopped. No, I'm joking.